All right, all right, all right. We are live, ladies uh, and gents. Um, welcome to our second session of TMF Week 2023. Um, thank you all for joining us um, for our second session. Uh, like I said before, you could be anywhere and you choose to spend your time with us, so thank you so much for that. Um, just before we get things started, I just want to make sure that everyone uh, can hear and see us. So please either send a thumbs up right in the general chat, which is in the left and the right corner, um, panel corner um, of your screen. Just let us know that you can hear us and uh, that you can see us. So I'm seeing a lot of like emojis coming up. So that's pretty cool. If anybody can just write in the chat that they can, where they're from, where they're calling in from or where they're tuning in from, that would be great. Okay, everyone's saying yep. Excellent. So let us move on before we get things um, started. We always have to go over some housekeeping rules. It's very important. So, um, as I said before, frequently asked question is: Are the sessions going to be recorded? The answer is yes. We want you to have the information, so you will be. We, you will be able to go back and, and, and look at the recordings, if there's anything that you missed. You'll also be able to have the um, slide deck portion as well so that you can um, review that. So don't worry, we got you. You will be able to see that afterwards. Um, just so that you know, if you are an attendee and you attend at least one or more sessions, you will automatically receive a certificate of attendance. And what better way to brag about going to the <laughs> best like TMF conference on the planet um, than by sharing it on LinkedIn. So we'll make sure to have that for you at the end. Questions will be answered at the end of the presentation. So when Don and Steph are done, we will get right into the meat of the questions so that we can um, answer them for you. Um, and then, of course, there's the networking breaks. Uh, this is very important to, you know, just come together, uh, rub elbows with uh, peers and colleagues, and just get, you know, to make connections and contacts. And just to go over the session timeline, like I said, we're going to be doing the um, sessions going to take about 30 to 35 minutes. Then we have the Q&A section, which will take around 10 to 15 minutes. And then we'll be introducing some other um, topics as well. So without further ado, I'm going to uh, pass the baton over to Don and Steph. Uh, session number two, Inspection Aftermath, Digging Yourself Out of Kappa Hell. I love this title so much. I chuckled so much when I read it. So uh, looking forward to the session. I'm just going to remove myself. OK. And now you can share your screen and give your presentation. Thanks, Kimberly. You're welcome. Have a great presentation, guys. Later. You will. Okay. There we go. All right. Hello, everyone. Uh, Steph and I are, are very excited to, to present this today. Hopefully, you'll get a few tidbits out of it and um, have lots of questions in the end. Um, both she and I have had a um, pretty decent amount of experience dealing with inspections and particularly the aftermath, you know, what do you do afterwards? So I'm gonna start just by introducing myself and then I'll hand this over to Steph to introduce herself. My name is Dawn Nickham. For those who you don't need, know me, I'm the Executive Vice President for QA and Compliance and Inception Group. And part of what um, my, my role is and part of what I do is I do have a TMF operations group um, underneath me that um, works very closely with, with many clients, as well as I do little things like work with the TMF reference model as a steering committee member and um, am very involved in developing some training through CDISC. So having said that, I'm going to hand it over to Steph to let her introduce herself. Thanks, Don. Um, hi, everybody. I am Steph Discomi, Director of Global Regulatory Clinical Services at AZI. Um, I have uh, two teams underneath me. One is TMF Management and Safety Alert Reporting. Um, 
really excited to be here because I have been in this space um, in the industry for over 15 years and have dealt with many of um, Kappa's and then part of my inspections and also the pre and the post aftermath. So really, um, and I know Don, just as she said, has as well. And we both have a lot to contribute to <laughs> this topic. And it was fun coming up with this topic. It hit home with everybody that talked about. So Don, if you can come into the next slide, please. Of course, we have to do our disclaimer. So as always, these materials have been uh, excuse me, prepared for educational purposes. They do not reflect anything of our companies, only our experiences of, of our own, and um, really looking forward to sharing what we've been through and what the knowledge we've gained. On to the next. Okay, our agenda. As you may have all seen um, within their little blurb, that we're going to talk about um, what's actually, we're talking about what's an inspection report, set the baseline, give you some foundational knowledge. What is a CAPA? Not um, everybody may know what the terms are, but exactly what is it? Breaking it down, how do you get there? How do you develop those, those pieces of the CAPA, the root cause, et cetera? How to make your cap is effective. So not just putting words on paper and having something to do, but really utilizing um, those capas to improve your processes, et cetera. And then how do you manage the, the capas at the end of the day? Um, is there is a little bit of a management that's required. So to kick us off, if we can go to the next slide, we have a poll question. Um, and we just want everybody to really be involved and engaged in our presentation here. So our first press, uh, question is, have you ever responded to a CAPA? Um, if we could put that up, I believe, Kimberly, you will be Yes. Ready? Okay, uh, thank you. Yes. So the poll question is absolutely no problem, Steph. Uh, the poll question is live. So if, you, if people will head over to the right panel, you'll see there is a poll section. Just enter in your um, answers here now. We're going to give a few um, seconds because there is a little delay. We want to make sure we get all of your answers in. So um, that will be that. So just oh, head on. It. Yeah, you're seeing it in real time coming in. It's, it's quite nice, it's like a race. <laughs> it is. It is like great. Mm -hmm. It's one more time. Just uh, this is great because we have a lot of experience, and we also have some some folks who haven't had an opportunity. And when I mean opportunity, it's a pure on opportunity to go through this. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, I'm seeing like it's starting to like slow down. Yeah, we'll give one, one or two more seconds for those last yeah. answers. I think so. I think we can go ahead and end it. Yep. Okay. And there now, and it has ended. Oh, this is so. great. So our first one. Um, so majority of us, 62. Oh, it's going down now. 61 point <laughs> percent. Yes, you have responded to a kappa. So um, there's quite a few of you who understand the process or have been through the process at least, and then some of you about 38.8 percent that have not. So thank you very much. It's great to know who our audience is. And then the next poll, we have one more question on this slide for you is, how many CAPA actions have you handled at one time? Is it A, one, B, two to five, or C, less than five? Greater than five. Oh, sorry, greater than five. Silly me. All right, so people, um, guys, get your answers in it is live right now so I'm, I'm seeing answers coming in already so i think everyone knows where to go and give their answers yeah i think i was hoping everybody yeah <laughs> left than five that would be nice <laughs> exactly that would be nice if that was the max i fall under c greater than five myself john yourself how about you oh yeah many times <laughs> Most of the time, let's let's go with that. Right, yeah, most of the time. Okay, so I um, think we're evened out here, and we're we're right in that that middle range of two to five. So, um, it's one, it's pretty manageable. Two to five starts to get a little, a uh, you know, array, and we'll talk about how to manage that. And those with greater than five, I feel your pain, and so does Don. So I am going to now have John take it away and start kick us off with some of the content of our presentation. Absolutely. Okay, so we, we do want to baseline a little bit. 
And I know we have some folks that are very experienced with this and some folks that maybe aren't so much or maybe have been more back on the tail end. But, you know, we did want to talk about where, where are these kappas or where the issues come from and, you know, how they may be defined. So when you have an inspection and you get to the end of your inspection, and I, I broke this down by FDA and some other agencies, um, you know, FDA, if there's something that they feel falls to the level of a 483, and usually they use the word of things are egregious enough that they feel like they actually need to formally um, put it down on a 483, they will do that and they will give that to you at the end of the inspection. But they will also give you some things that are observations. And more often than not, you, you'll find a fair number of things in the observations that you still will want to respond to. So, you know, our responses when we talk about having an effective CAPA, because that's what the agencies are looking for. Most other agencies, such as the EMA, they're going to provide you the same thing, give you a summary at the end. They're going to provide it to you verbally. They don't give you a formal form at the end. However, um, once you get those verbal findings, it still gives you the opportunity to start working on your responses. All agencies are going to give you an inspection report. And this report generally is um, prepared by the inspector immediately after the inspection. And in the case of, of FDA, just to give you an idea, if you do get a 483, you want to respond to those and you want to respond to those within 15 business days at the maximum. And the reason is the inspectors have 15 business days to write their EIR. So if you respond and you respond with a really good kappa, then that can already take the finding down and um, get a positive impact in the inspection report. It also may ward off a warning letter too if something was really off the rails. Uh, inspection report is EMA, compliance assessment is what the PDMA calls it. So just a different thing that's all same the th same here. And the responses, and they all expect responses, will include your CAPAs. That, so that's where this starts. In, um, in some of the inspection reports, actually, FDA doesn't really define it this way. If it's a major, major or critical, that's a 483. That, that's kind of where you go. But with a lot of the other agencies, particularly EMA and MHRA, they will define the criticality. And the criticality becomes really important because if it's a minor finding, they feel like this might have been a something that could lead to a breach in GCP or if it shows a failure of your quality system, but it's minor. It's, it's more, maybe it's a one-off, it happened one time. Uh, we're not worried that this is overall going to impact the data integrity or the safety of the patients. A major one really feels like this may lead. So you may not be at a serious breach, but you're close and you may be showing some inklings that your quality system is, can fail. Um, for critical findings, it means that you've had a breach in GCP or you've had serious non-compliance with regulatory requirements and it indicates a serious failure. Just to put this in context, if you get an inspection report with a critical finding, that could impact your submission. So critical findings are those ones we never want to see in an inspection report. But even so, if you do have a critical finding and you do come back with a very robust kappa, that can still ward that off and push you into, into an approval. So again, you know, agencies, they, they generally are there to um, ensure that the data is what you said the data was, that you did everything according to protocol, according to GCP. However, they will, they will put those findings in their reports. So what's a kappa? You know, we talked about these findings. Okay, well, what's a kappa? And I'm actually going to define corrective and preventative action in a second. But these are really created for 
um, as responses to the inspection findings and a commitment to the regulatory agency following inspection. These, when you put a CAPA in place, the importance of following it through to the end really is linked on the regulatory agency one, depending what in the CAPA, taking your product to approval, but two, when they come back the next time, they're gonna look at all those CAPAs and say, did you do what you said you're gonna do? And did you ensure that it was effective? And we'll talk about that in a second. So what's the difference? You know, what, what's a CAPA versus what's, what's a corrective action versus what's a preventative action? So corrective action, preventative action, there's your CAPA acronym. A corrective action is really that immediate action. What are you doing to, to get the problem under control? What are you fixing immediately? You know, the example may be um, you received documents with personal private information into your, your TMF. What did you do immediately? You know, you removed that document, you made sure that it was removed from all sources that it came into, but now we're going to say, how are we going to prevent that? How are we going to prevent that from happening again? We don't want problems to continue to repeat. And they need to be based on process and or revised tools for improvement because you want to eliminate the root cause of how you got to being in a CAPA. Okay. So what is a deviation? Where are CAPAs born? I like to think this, where do they come? So you may have a deviation, planned or unplanned, that you need to have a corrective action from. It can be from the audits or inspections. So from reports, you're explaining in the report. You may have inspection findings, and we talked about the criticality. And you, you want to look at how to satisfy the inspector with a well thought out report response. Again, how do we do that? And I'm gonna put in here the one kappa, this is my pet peeve, and if you take nothing else away from this, retraining is generally not a kappa. And I'll tell you why in a second. We're gonna talk about root cause, and in order to have retraining, you have to prove to me that training was inadequate in the beginning. And so anyone who knows me, again, knows where I come from that. All right, Steph. Okay, thank you so much, Don. Um, so obviously with CAPAs, there is challenges, many challenges. But I think what we'd love to hear from you guys in the chat is what is your biggest challenge with CAPAs? So just put a few things down in chat, you know, when, when you've had to deal with CAPAs, what, what was your biggest thing? Well, I know for me, sometimes it's a few things could be anything from identifying the root cause can be certainly a challenge because you can't put retraining, right, Don? Um, or managing multiple at once, that could be certainly challenging. Not sure if I'm seeing anything come into the chat on my side. Don, what are some of your challenges? Yeah, so some of the challenges, um, actually, we just saw one, um, getting people to identify the root cause. I think we just saw one. <laughs> no one wants to do CAPAs. True. Um, writing a CAPA and getting cited again from the CAPA you have written. Yeah, that, that's about effective CAPAs. Um, some of the challenges from a QA um, perspective is really getting the right people to be part of it. And I see Amanda put that. So really getting the function to own it. Mm -hmm. um, rejected CAPAs, I love this. Yeah, identifying root cause. A lot of people are saying root cause. Time for effectiveness checks. And we're gonna talk a little bit about those. Getting organized and training the team. All the things we're gonna be talking about today, which yeah. is great. Yeah, the retraining was the biggest challenge. Yeah, no retraining. No retraining on CAPAs. <laughs> great. Communication between de departments. That is absolutely true. It's, it can be very challenging. These are great guys. Uh, certainly, um, we we feel your pain and and have I think most between the two of us touching every single one of these challenges. Um, 
certainly not easy. And, and, and thank you, everybody, for sharing um, your challenges here in the chat. Uh, it's nice to see that we're not alone, and I'm sure others as well. Yeah. So to keep us moving, John, if you can go into our next slide. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. What does CAPAs do for us more than give us a headache? I know sometimes when I know what's coming post audit or post inspection, I just already feel the headache before it comes on because um, in my world, I mean, I think in all of our worlds, TMF generally has a finding um, some way or somehow. I, I kind of have the running joke that it, timeliness is probably stamped on a inspection uh, report of some sort. Um, but that's okay. We, we learn to manage them and we learn to use them um, not as a slap on the wrist, but let's use them um, as a positive educational tool or a way to improve our processes. Um, we do know that the prep and the stress of it all is it can be overwhelming and it definitely can get us all, all twisted and turned in what these are. Um, but you know, we want to not only include ourselves in these, but also ensure that our stakeholders are part of this. So what are some of the great things that come out of the CAPAs? Number one, I just said it, it really identifies those gaps and issues within our processes. So we could sit back and on a regular basis, think our processes are running very smoothly. And then we have inspection and audit, whatever the case may be, and get this report come in and, and we have to write up a CAPA because there's a finding. And when you sit down and drill down that, that root cause analysis, you're like, oh, well, maybe there's actually a, an issue or two that we could maybe improve here or, you know, and, and maybe it's at the time when you implemented that process, that process worked for that time. But now you, maybe your organization or your ecosystem of TMF has evolved. So now your processes need to evolve to, to fit it. So there's some great um, pieces that come from that. Also, just like I said um, a minute ago, though, is revisit the current process, not just the piece. Look at the entire process from end to end. Does it work? Are there other issues that outside of the cap or outside of the finding might be identified? So it's another way to open our eyes and, and look through a different lens than we normally would day to day um, for improvements and efficiency. Um, improves our tools or move forward tools again and or processes so you know we're just talking about processes in the past couple bullet points but our tools are just as important our etms systems maybe there's some reconfiguration that needs to be done there um, maybe it's tools you're using outside of your etms to keep your uh, tmf in good health so certainly a, a piece to look at is your tools and i this is one that was brought together in all of the throughout the chat was said a couple of times could improve your relationships with your stakeholders because you have to collaborate with with people it's getting buy-in from maybe not just your team maybe it's your leadership maybe it's your management maybe it's quality um, maybe it is the study teams as well so you need to, to work with them to get an effective kappa in place and get to that root cause and get everybody to agree on what you're putting down on that document so certainly there, um, there's some potential uh, working relationships that will grow out of this and improve out of this and become stronger and help you move forward as then when you actually improve your processes, you have those people to, to collaborate with and work with as well. So there are great things that can come out of CAPAs, um, not just giving us a headache and uh, more work on our back. It's um, a lot of process improvement and collaboration and, and uh, relationship building. So I think there's a bit more that we can take away from CAPAs. Next slide. Opportunities, we just went through a couple of them. So improve your processes and your systems. Um, demonstrate the health, of, the health of your quality system. So certainly um, not only is it your TMF, but also your quality management system. Um, how is that working from their perspective and change for the better? Out of these always comes change for the better. Um, it could be the improvements from your overall TMF health in the long run. It could be improvements in the relationships that you're building, improvements in your processes or tools. So all good things do come from it in the end of the day. So really exciting. And I think Don mentioned this earlier. If you write a really good CAPA, if you have a critical finding, you actually maybe even change that for the better um, in the long run. So there are things that can come out of it. So it's always a really good idea 
to take your time when you're writing these out and think outside the box um, and try not just to, to get it done and get it, push it through. Um, I like to think future forward when I'm writing these. What, what is really my team headed for? And what is um, for our processes and our teams? And what's best for the organization? Where are we going in the big game plan along the way? So ways, ways to look at it instead of the here and now and, and what happened in the past, what, how can we do this to improve us moving forward? Next slide. Root cause analysis. So this one myself was always challenging when I first um, started doing cap, uh, writing capos and finding root cause analysis. I'll be honest with you, I never had any training in this space, so it was just try and figure it out, Steph, good luck, and handed it in. Of course, it came back a thousand times. Um, had to go down. So I think it just was really important to both Don and I to to spend a little time here on how to identify root cause analysis. There are different things. So what is a root cause analysis to start? The process of determining the cause to, of the issue to identify appropriate solutions. Painful but needed. So what do you do? Um, correct remedy root causes rather than just symptoms. Again, don't just put a Band-Aid over it really what's going to fix the problem. Treat the symptoms for short-term relief um, can be and often are multiple root causes. That's one that's really, really, really important. Um, you could go different ways and just say, oh, it, it, John said earlier, retraining is not one for the books. It's probably something bigger than that. And it's probably something outside of that. So it, maybe it's more than one thing. Focus on how and why, not the who. Human error is not a root cause. And I, myself, has been a person to say, oh, that person wasn't trained, or they just did a, a not so great job. Um, so really, why maybe wasn't that person trained, or why didn't they do a good job? Maybe it's a priority issue that they, they had other things on their plate, so maybe it's something, a resourcing issue. Um, maybe they didn't understand the process. Uh, maybe so I hate not this retraining, but how is your education and your uh, training material set up? So there are different ways to look at it. Find concrete cause evidence to back up your root cause claims. 100% true. Find that evidence. Have that in front of you, being able to speak to it uh, with confidence of what you're coming up with. Provide enough information to inform a corrective course of action. Um, Absolutely, the information that when you put it out there to have your stakeholders review your capas, because I know right, right now I'm going through this internally and um, I have to send everything through my quality team and our leadership. Do they agree with what they're writing? And to sh do they agree with me with what I've written? And now do I have the robust materials to back that up, what I'm presenting and what I'm suggesting? And then also, very important, and I'm glad this is the last one, is consider how that root cause can be prevented moving on in the future. It is, it is very true. Um, how can it be prevented? Where were your gaps beforehand? And let's try and not make that misstep ahead of time or as you go down the, down the path. So um, overall, there's a lot of things to think about as you're going through your root cause. Um, go to the next slide, John. This one's actually my no, not my favorite one, but almost my favorite. Root cause analysis. There are three different methods that we're going. Um, we're only going to talk about one of them, but there are three that we put on here today. The five whys, the change analysis, and failure mode and effects analysis. Um, we're going to focus on the five whys today. Uh, the other two certainly uh, can be a topic for conversation at another presentation, but uh, this one I really like the five whys, and I'll tell you why. Yeah, and the five whys are, are certainly really easy. So I do want to just touch on what the other two are, just so people know. FMEA is, is something that generally um, people from the GMP world are very familiar with and device world, but really looking at where you can failure, where, where you can fail. So, you know, where were our failures? Change analysis is pretty easy in that what do we do to change? And, you know, this is, you know, change analysis, especially when you talk about systems or things where things went wrong, you know, what do we change in our system to suddenly um, make it fail in the way it did, suddenly have an issue? Um, so, you know, if you've changed a process, you've changed a system. But five whys, it's a simple one and it gets you, gets you where you need to. 
And it's really asking yourself five times at least why, you know, why did this happen? So answering why with each answer and Steph's going to take you through a really, really, I think, fun example. Mm -hmm. um, at the fifth why, you, you have an understanding of why, why the issue occurred, actually the root cause. So until you get to that, it might be more than five whys, just so you know, but this is, this is a general rule of thumb. We have an example that Steph's going to share with us. So this is my favorite slide. Um, does everybody remember when, or, or if you have children in your life, nieces, nephews, little kids, whatnot, I know for my son, when he was um, younger, he used to play the why game with me. Mom, why are the trees green? And I'd give him an answer. Mom, why, 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 why? And we would go, and I'd give him an answer as long as I could and think of something. Eventually, I'd be like, I, I don't know anymore, but, but it was almost doing the same thing. It was causing, it was giving him answers giving the root cause of what he was trying to get to. I mean, just the other day, same thing, sitting with my niece um, somewhere, and she's asking me, she said, why is there a candle um, on the shelf over there, I like guess, to light up the picture? Why is the picture, uh, why is the light up the picture? Because the picture's pink. It needs to be seen better. I don't, it was a why. So it was very interesting. So same thing here. You want to get to the bottom. You want to get to that, why did this happen? So here's our example. So inspection finding. Sponsor failed to follow their TMS plan, which indicated periodic reviews to be completed on a quarterly basis. Before I read all of this, I want to know when John and I developed these slides, John put um, this inspection finding said, can you come up with the root cause, the five whys? I didn't realize that Don actually put in the five whys for me. And uh, I came up with my own. At the end of the day, we came up with the same exact root cause. So my first why was, why was their QCs not completed per the TMF plan? Well, why did the TMF, why did the team not understand the requirements of the TMF plan? Then you kind of think to yourself, well, okay, they didn't understand the requirements of the plan. So why did they, why, if they didn't have, understand the requirements, why was there a lack of oversight of the plan, of the plan requirements? And why was the TMF plan not reviewed since the initial version? So you're kind of going down the path of like, wait, we didn't have oversight. So somehow if we didn't have oversight that no one's really looked at it, there's never been a revision. So it hasn't been touched since the first one. And so at the end of the day, why was, why was not a regular review of the team of plan in place? We came up to the same exact thing. Why was there not a regular QC, eyes on your TMF plan, taking a look on a regular basis, whatever that might be, to make sure all of Everything was up to date, the processes, the um, maybe new, if you have SOPs listed in there, those could have changed over time. So at the end of the day, we came up with the same thing. Doing your five whys, just going down, going down. Don't get me wrong. It's easy to get stumped because I know at one point I was writing this, I wrote three different whys. It said the same, same thing three different ways. So make sure you try to think outside the box. Um, it's really a, a great example to do to get to your root cause. Um, I do know we're, we're need to move things along. So I'm going to have Don take on to the next slide. Okay. So really, you know, this, this is submitting the response and, you know, this is really where we're, we're going, you know, my response is complete. Am I ready to submit? So this is when you do need to take a little step back, look at your entire re report response and see, did you have any trends? you know, and do you have similar root causes? And if so, can one Kappa fix multiple issues and findings? Now we're starting to drill down to some tools, some ways that you can dig yourself out of being in this Kappa hell. You know, how can we get out of that? And will you, will you satisfy your quality team and, and or your inspector? So again, you talk about going to QA and having them review it and they're going to take a first look at it but have you put enough robustness in here to satisfy the inspector i read you know I, i'm one of those geeks i read warning letters for fun i read a lot of fda warning letters and if you read a lot of fda warning letters yeah i, I know it's who i am um if you read them they'll say okay you gave us a response you gave us a kappa but it's not adequate because and that's really the bottom line is if they don't feel it's going to 
affect or fix the root cause and you haven't done a robust enough investigation, you're going to get called out on it. And that's where warning letters tend to come from. So we have one last poll. Yep. And just we wanna... do. sorry, go ahead. Oh, no, 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 it's okay. Either way, um, so it's one last poll. So if you can bring up our group, my poll on my side, after all is said and done, do you review your tapas? Yes, no, sometimes. I'm curious. So the poll is now live. Um, you guys can head over to the poll icon on the right panel and give in your um, answers. So they're coming in now. I'm gonna give you guys a moment to give your answers. And make sure you be honest with it. Okay, there we go. I, saw <laughs> there, like, I like that. <laughs> like, wait a minute. Come on, guys. Be honest. Come on. <laughs> Remember, it's anonymous. Nobody will know. Except if it's Too any of my team saying no, we'll have a talk later. <laughs> we'll <I'll> talk. <laughs> Too funny. Okay, give it like a few more seconds. Seeing yep. um, that just coming in. And just by the way, um, I had somebody that said that they really liked the five wise slide that you created. It was very well that. done. So, <laughs> oh, that was kind of cool. Okay, we're going to end the poll. All the answers in. Um, so we have seventy-five percent, close to seventy-six, that said yes, mm -hmm. or five percent, close to five percent, that said no, and. 19% said sometimes. Great. I, Don, I'm going to guess from your, your quality side of you, or your heart, your big hearts on the 75%. They're going back and looking. Yeah, absolutely. Definitely. Um, because it's really, it's going to lead into our next piece that we're going to talk about, and that's about Kappa effectiveness. Yeah, you know, this, this is really, I, I alluded to this a minute ago. Um, you do need an effectiveness check. I noticed a lot of people did put that you need to have adequate time for the effectiveness check. I think that's that's absolutely true. Sometimes we need to get an early indicator based on, especially if it's an inspection, are we moving in the right direction? But really make sure that um, you give yourself enough time to say, did this work? We want to know, and the inspectors want to know, did the CAPA fix the issue? QA wants to know, did the CAPA fix the issue? You know, we want to make sure that the CAPA does not reoccur. So the issue does not reoccur. We prevented the issue from reoccurring. So the P in CAPA, the C and the P, you know, they, they really have different um, effects and different goals. The corrective action is let's stop the bleeding and get this all taken care of um, for the moment. But the preventative action really is the key to say, let's make sure this doesn't happen again. So I put a few examples of how you can do an effectiveness check. It might be through your periodic checks in your, in your um, TMF, and this could be a periodic review. So maybe at the next periodic review, you want to specifically look at issues that came up for the CAPA, whether it's your timeliness issue, whether it's your um, QC um, review, what was missed and is it happening now? Uh, you can do it through sampling of the TMF. You can just monitor the TMF. Many, many systems have um, dashboards and metrics that they give you in real time basis. So maybe you'll put in your effectiveness check that I'm, I'm going to monitor the TMF for the next three months and ensure that this metric shows improvement and do that. You can have your QA um, counterparts help you with this and do an internal audit of the TMF. Remember, internal audits, these are done, you know, to show you internally what's going on they don't get shared with inspectors so you know if you do an internal audit the inspectors aren't going to look for the results of that but they're going to look that it was done so some sort of certificate or evidence that says an internal audit was completed that's how you're going to want to do this and these really are our keys for success we want to know were we successful 
you've done all this work. How can I make sure that it actually did that? And speaking of tools for success, we have a few more to share. So I'm going to share, I'm going to do the couple, the first couple, and then I'm going to turn over to Stephanie, but, you know, implementing reasonable time-based CAPAs. So you don't want to have CAPAs that are um, showing it's going to take a year or two to make it happen or things that are happening over a really long period of time. You really do want to have a reasonable time to ensure that you can get done what you need to get done but also in a timely manner. And along those lines is you need to prioritize your campus. So the most egregious things that happen, we want to take care of those first and go from there. Steph, I'm going to let you take the next couple there. Sure, absolutely. Um, so the next one would be include your stakeholders. It is so important to include people that are part of the process, part of the, the root cause, um, your team members, your leadership, um, your colleagues, uh, ensuring that everybody's on the same page. When we're moving forward with this, the Band-Aid and then the treatment, we're doing it all together. We're on the same page. There's no surprises at the end of the day. And, and we're on the same page because, like I said before, these CAPAs could, are not only just a fix today, but they're helping us to improve tomorrow and evolve our ecosystems of TMF. Um, the next one is group your kappas with similar root causes. Um, it is really good to do that. It, it you know, it, it you could get multiple findings around the same um, root causes. So group them together. Be smart about it. Watch the trending. If it's a trending issue, these are going to pop up here too as well. Um, and then assign owners that can be held accountable for completion. This is so important. Um, you know, work with those stakeholders again, but assign the owners, those SMEs in that space that not only are going to uh, drive it forward, but drive it as it, it's not just checking it off the list, that it's, it's a really important value um, to the team and to the organization and getting it done. Because uh, getting it done, I'll tell you, I'm sure with you, I know every time, every time I can close that kappa, I feel Amazing. I was like, ah, oh, a big check off that list. So really it's important to do that. And I'm now going to toss it back over to Don for the last couple to wrap us up. Yeah. And so really, you know, big, big things here that, you know, putting someone as an overall Kappa lead. So having someone who is able to drive this process from top to bottom, we all have, you know, really, really busy day jobs. And when you put Kappas in the hands, particularly of your functional team or even your TMF operations, you want to make sure that there's someone watching and ensuring that things are getting done. And this Kappa lead, I highly suggest that this is in the um, in the function. You know, certainly QA and even your TMF operations lead can keep an overall you know um, review of this, but within the function, you need to have someone who understands to do this. And I think the last one being the most important one, mm -hmm. just to have patience. Patience with your stakeholders, patience with each other, patience as you are able to um, get through this process because it can be painful, but it doesn't have to be. Anything else you wanna to add to that, Steph? No, I, um, and it's not overnight. It takes time. To, to get these in place and go through them. So patience is key, absolutely. I remember we put this one on the slide and we're both like, yes, absolutely, patience needs to be on there. It is a tool for success. And I believe that is our last slide and I think all the information we're giving today. So thank you everyone. I know we were right on time, 1045, but didn't give a lot of room for questions. So I'm gonna take that to Kimberly. Thank you so much, ladies. Um, really appreciate uh, this very insightful um, session. Um, fortunately, we're not going to be able to have, ask any, answer any questions today because uh, we have to like move along. Um, but we will be able to get back to you after um, at the end of uh, the session. We'll reach out to you and, and answer those questions that you guys answered. It was so good that like before <laughs> we're really into it, we had the polls going. So like it, it, it was a very engaging session. So thank you very much for that. I'm just going to ask you to thank you so much. Thank you. Um, so 
I'm just going to add this in here. So we're done with our Q&A section. We, we are going to pass our Q&A session. Um, please. So up next is our panel um, discussion that's coming up at the top of the hour at 11. Um, so make sure to join in there after. And just to let you know, we are running a TMF Pulse Check contest. Um, so we are just looking to get some information from you. So if you can, please, please take the survey. You could have a chance of winning a pair of cool TMF Converses. So I'm sharing the link in the chat. Um, just please, you know, give us some information, give us, you know, whatever we need that we're asking you for, uh, and you can walk away with these. They're pretty cool. So just want to say thank you, Don. Thank you, Steph. Um, and thank you, attendees, for uh, joining us today for this great session. Yes, thank you, everybody. Thank you. Bye. Bye.